right? Uh, oh my god! Don't do that. <laughs> oh hey, didn't see you there. It's Ryan. We're uh we're let's playing Resistance Fall of Man. Last let's play was Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus. I told you straight up, hey, Resistance is going to be the next game. And so here it is, we're starting it now. Seems like most people said Resistance 1, so we're gonna do Resistance 1. Launch PlayStation 3 game, man. I haven't played this. The last time I beat the last time I beat Resistance Fall of Man was 2008. And that was a co-op playthrough I did with my friend Terrell. And then the only time, the only other time I beat it was PS3 launch, you know, 2006. So I've only beaten the game twice. It's been a long time, so I'm gonna. It's basically, you know, because I, I, my mind is so stupid, right? Like I can never retain information. It's almost, it's almost essentially gonna be a, a blind let's play. Now you'll see completes is one. That was the co-op let's play that I did on this PlayStation 3. Uh, this is a slim, a slim line, or no, it can't be 2008 then. Because this is a slim PS3 that came out 2009. Okay, then that's the last time I played this. Because my first completed save was on my fat 60-gig uh, PlayStation 3. New game. All your progress in your current... Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, it's ab yeah I absolutely. Go ahead and do it. Uh, we'll play on medium. I mean, I'm somewhat decent at first-person shooters. The game's not, you know, difficult by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but we're going to jump right into it. Because the game is going to get all crazy. And it's going to start showing cutscenes. There you go. The Khmeran threat began in Russia. The origin of the virus is unknown, but its effects were devastating and swift. In the 1930s, reports of biological experiments began leaking out of Russia. Then reports of villages destroyed overnight. Then entire cities. We feared the Russians had developed a weapon of unparalleled power. The truth was far worse. The Chimera stayed sealed within Russia for over a decade. Then, in 1949, they launched an attack that overwhelmed all of Europe in a matter of weeks. For several months, we thought England was safe. But in October of 1950, the Chimera burrowed under the channel. We had prepared for them, but in three months' time, the war was lost. We abandoned the cities to the Chimera and retreated to scattered military bases and outposts. The Chimera had won. On July the 11th, 1951, the Americans launched an assault on the eastern coast of England. On the second wave of that assault was a sergeant named Nathan Hale. The actions of that soldier have become a matter of both scrutiny and myth. What follows are the known events of his life from July 11th to July the 14th, the day he was last seen. had no idea what they would soon be facing. The US government had sealed its borders in 1950. Radio waves and newspapers became state property. Only the highest levels of their government knew the truth. The operation was an exchange. The Americans were bringing supplies and tanks into York. We were giving them our one secret weapon, something we could offer that they couldn't build themselves. I was the commander of the convoy team that was to meet the U.S. soldiers. We were ambushed in Manchester on the way to the rendezvous. There was no way to warn the Americans. They were on their own in York, fighting an enemy they knew nothing about. We never learnt exactly what happened there. All we know is that Nathan Hale was the sole survivor. No, no, no! Alright, here we go. Man, it's been a long time since I've seen this game. You can already tell that early PlayStation 3 vibe. You know, the game is like, you know, it's like the game didn't age well, certainly, but that's how shit works. You know, you look at NES and it's like, oh, that's an NES game. This is an early PS3 launch title. 
you know, but, you yeah, know, whatever. Still looks awesome. Still plays awesome. And I'm pumped to... I'm, 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 ex I'm genuinely excited to replay this game. Ah, I remember seeing this intro like 50 times, because for some reason I replayed like the first few missions a hundred times. You're with me, let's go! Ah, I love that intro. I love that intro because, like, it jumps you, like, literally right into the game, right? Like, you're already here, you're already, like, like you're right in the middle of the war. The first how many seconds of the game, uh, just, exp you know, catches you up on most of the, um, I'm turning the TV volume down, hold on. Uh, the first, like, what, two, three minutes of the game that you just saw catches you up on all the stuff that you needed to know because now you're right in the, right smack dab in the middle of the war where the Chimera are, for the most part, uh, kicking ass. Oh, my God, I forgot the controls. Yeah, R3 to zoom in, man, this is weird. Yeah, he's always behind that. Look at that. And this is the first uh, first person shooter I've uh, let's played so far. First ever on this YouTube channel. That's exciting, isn't it? Isn't it ex ex exciting? Let's just party it up, man. You know, you know you're gonna have a great party when someone sighs and then uh, like they sigh like ugh, and then they go party it up, man. Like oh, geez, that's really fucking ex oh, Jesus Christ, oh, my God. Like, that's really exciting, right? Uh, so yeah, like, the first two, three minutes, it's all like, you know, uh, the Chimera pretty much, uh, invade planet Earth on Russia, they, you know, pretty much take over everything, they work their way to the UK, they go into the, like, under the English Channel, uh, they fight for three months, uh, the UK loses, they, they go to, like, military outposts, and then Nathan Hale is on, like, some sort of expedition or something, or whatever the fuck, and... Uh, everyone there dies except him, uh, because he gets infected by the Chimera, but he is totally fine. In fact, he gets regenerative health, and he's, like, stronger, and he can take more bullets. That's kind of, the, that's how they kind of explain, you know, the video game logic, which te technically works, because that's how Nathan Hale is, you know. And, uh, yeah, what uh, there's another piece of information I know I'm, I'm missing right now. That's genuinely important to the story. Uh, I forgot. Oh, uh, the fact that the, the Chimera, like, uh, yeah, this, that's what they do. They infect people. Um, wow, I cannot hit this guy. Fucking carbine. Terrible range. Die, dude. Yeah, they infect people. They've got these conversion towers that the Chimera do. They, I'm just gonna fucking run and gun this shit, like, for real. <laughs> Ugh. They do all these like conversion towers. Oh, here we go. The Reapers. Oh, where's that young weapon wheel? How do I bring that up? There you go. Reapers. Yeah, like I said, it's been a while since I played this. I'm gonna have to. It's gonna take a little bit for me to remember everything. Certainly these outdated controls. Because, you know, certainly uh, throughout the PS3 360 life cycle, there was certainly a sort of standard for controls when it came to first-person shooters, something that it's like pick up and pl pick up and play. Like, no matter what first-person shooter you buy and take home with you, you can pretty much play it within the first how many minutes without learning much. Which always, always reminds me of when I picked up Killzone 2 and it had the fucking weirdest controls ever. Uh, the same as, uh... I think it was the same as, like, Resistance 1, kind of. Like, R3 was to zoom and shit. I was like, this is awful. So then you, like, change it to the sticks and whatnot. Or not the stick, you, you don't change zooming to the sticks, you fucking change it to the triggers. R2, L2, R1, L1. But you know, the thing with PS3 is, developers, like, didn't like, you know, because no, you know, because R2 and L2 on the PS3 kind of, you know, aren't that great. They're not really triggers, they're like, you know, your fingers can slide off them and shit. So most developers allocated shooting and aiming to L1 and R1, which was certainly a good choice. I'm just making sure I'm not being totally stupid and lost right now. But I remember this level so well, because again, I played it like a thousand times. I'm not even using L1, what the fuck's wrong with me? I got the Reapers, I gotta use, I gotta use the L1 and R1 to shoot both of them. Aw, oh, this guy doesn't look good. It's alright. I'm sure he went, he went down a hero. 
that's what this, you know, this is what it's all about, right? This is a war, like a quarantine, like shit's going down, right? Now, now the thing, I'm glad that we can talk about resistance because uh, I love... I, I love the idea of it, right? You know, a, a time where, you know, it's alternate history, like, aliens invade fucking... Like, usually, like, the, I, sometimes for me, like, the alien thing is, like, a little cliche, but I loved Resistance a lot because it's, like, you know... It's it's the past, basically. This is before, like, what? This is before World War Two happens, you know? It's, like, you've got inferior humans, inferior technology trying to deal with Chimera. Oh, my God. I just fucking shot my bullseye at the bus. God damn it. Oh, I'm down. I'm down as shit. What was I saying? What was I saying about Resistance Fall of Man? I like Resistance. It's basically what it all came down to. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, like the, the fact that it's in the past, so you've got people that don't really know how to use and use the technology and stuff. Like, the, like well, that's the thing, right? Because, like, these guys have carbines and stuff, but then once the war keeps going on, you pick up Chimera and weapons, and you learn to use them, and then you can use the bullseye, where it's like, oh, I tag him, and I can shoot him. Tag that guy, shoot him, even though I'm firing up here. Die, dude. Fucking stay down. So, I forgot, is there a running, is there even a run button in... Fall of Man? I don't even... I don't think there is. Is there? I, it's really been that long. I can't even remember if they're sprinting in uh, Fall of Man. Yeah, I don't think there is, man. And that's starting to come back to me. Yeah. The world... The, the World War 2 ness of the game. sort of situation that situation where I don't know man like like I said like for me the alien thing is sometimes cliche like Mass Effect for example I really like Mass Effect I love the story that they're doing I love that universe but like I don't know like it's like the sci-fi thing like the ships and planets and <clears throat> it's cool and I'm into it right but like I'm not a huge Mass Effect fan I enjoy the game but I wouldn't like go balls crazy for it like I'll get to it when I get to it like when I played Mass Effect 2 people were like raving and ranting about the game and it came to PS3 and I was like oh, I guess I'll buy it now um and I was like yeah I'm really enjoying this but I don't know it's not like in, in, incredible by any stretch of the imagination but that again that's just because like I wasn't into the whole space alien whatever the fuck so I don't know resistance kind of did it for me in the fact that it was certainly different in that regard right I'm not in spaceships immediately like this looks very it looks very what they're going for world war ii-esque but then you go to i'm going to trigger a cutscene up here but then it's like you go to resistance 2 and it's like oh man we're really losing now like they're really fucking kicking the shit out of us and then it's like resistance 3 they've pretty much fucking won and now you're just trying to survive with a family i just i really like that because it's still they're still living in that time time period okay where are these bugs going to come out they're going to come out of nowhere, right up here. Here we go. Captain, you seeing this? What the hell is that? No one knows exactly how Hale was infected by the Chimeran virus. Our only clue is a journal entry recovered from the body of a US medic. It says that he encountered a number of comatose soldiers in a dry creek bed. One of the soldiers, a sergeant, suddenly woke up. Unlike the other soldiers, his body had no wounds at all. The sergeant refused any kind of medical examination, insisting on catching up to the rest of the company. If that sergeant was in fact Nathan Hale, then he remains the only known person to wake up after being infected. Whether the Chimeran virus mutated within him, or whether his body had an innate resistance to it, remains a mystery. 
So he got infected, but he's all good in the hood, and everyone else died. So now we're going to yeah. So now we're going to Eng to England. You know, I think I think I think a lot of people will probably call me out about that, right? Because like I'm not into the whole sci-fi thing, and there's really like there's a lot of there's a lot of big franchises and like you know properties that are really big into that, right? Like Star Wars and Star Trek and. Battlestar Galactica, but not even, like, shit like that. Like, there's a ton of, like, space games and TV shows and movies and that involve aliens and stuff, and I was never big on that stuff. I honestly really wasn't. Or no, so we were, we were always in England. See, I don't even remember the story. I thought, I thought Hale got infected in America and then went to England. I'm fucking confused. I gotta look this up or something. Resistance 2 and 3 I remember a lot better. Fucking leapers. Crawler bastards. Yeah, there's like there's a lot of properties like that, man. I just never clicked with them, which is kind of crazy because it's like, how did you not click with any of those things? Because I know a lot of people fucking love Star Wars and they love... Star Trek, like, all the, like, guys, those are, like, the big ones, right? But there's a bunch of them that I'm not even gonna name because there's so many of them. I never clicked with any of that stuff. I just don't, I don't know. It wasn't me. I'll tell you what, though, uh, I loved Legos. So, even though I didn't like Star Wars, I always built, uh, like, Lego Star Wars stuff because they always had the coolest sets. Star Wars had the coolest fucking Lego sets ever. So, I always built those. But I never got what they were. I'd build something, and my mom's like, so what'd you build? And I'm like, I really don't know. It's like a cool ship thing. Uh, there's these fucking weird-looking guys on it. And uh, if a Star Wars fan, like, saw the thing that I built and all that, and I couldn't name any of it, he'd probably fucking murder me. And then he'd, like, get jail time. Because I was, like, you know, a human. I was also a kid, too, so it'd be one of those things where you, like... There's, like you're, like, you log into Facebook, and you see a picture of like the news story and then all the comments are like sick fucks he fucking killed a kid over Star Wars what a like what is our world coming to blah 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 share and like and then I'll monetize my Facebook page and reap the benefits and rewards of fucking thing misfortunes of other people's misfortunes because those are the real fucking sickos now nah, they're pretty terrible they're terrible people shouldn't be doing that I really don't like it when there's like, um, cause you guys know I like, I watch a lot of vines, like I love vines, and then all those Facebook pages would just like repost vines and stuff, and they wouldn't credit the fucking viners, that really annoyed me for some reason, like at least fucking credit the guy, right? Cause it's happening on YouTube too, like just a bunch of people uploading people's vines, monetizing it, it's a real issue, cause it's kinda hard to protect your properties nowadays. Even uh, brings up more spark about, you know, monetizing video game content on YouTube. It's really a uh, interesting conversation, which I'm not going to get too deeply into, because that deserves its own separate sort of thing when I'm not playing a game and trying to focus on two different things at once. What's in here? Nothing. There's intel in the game. I don't know where all of it is. I hardly remember where any of it is. I hardly remember the story. Man. Next gen. <laughs> it's what we were saying back then in 2006. I did really enjoy this game, though. Now, here's another thing why I really liked Resistance and why Resistance Fall of Man, at least, really clicked with me. Is, uh, and again, sort of a weird thing for me, like something that everyone else loved and I kind of didn't. Um,. Like, I was, like, I was a console kid growing up, like, full on. I, I barely ever played, like, PC games and all that. And, uh, and not to say, like, FPSs are just for PC, but, like, you know, that was a platform that was very FPS heavy. And, uh, you know, consoles had FPSs, but point being, like, I just never really played them. Uh, PS1 and PS2, for me, it was always, like, it was always platformers or RPGs or like puzzle games there's something that wasn't like I, I would play pretty much every genre except fps's i don't know why it was just something i was never completely interested in 
A uh, lot of third-person shooters I love, but not first-person shooters. In fact, I almost, whenever I did play one at, like, a buddy's house or something, I was always just like, eh, like, I don't know, I don't, I don't really get it. But then Resistance Fall of Man was, like, the only good PS3 game you could buy back in 2006. So I was like, alright, I'm gonna give the genre a shot, and then, lo and behold, I ended up enjoying it. And it's a good thing I did end up enjoying it, because PS3 and 360 were fucking filled with FPSs left and right. Which I didn't mind, because they were great games. But it's, that's, you know, it's like, okay, well, I would have liked more platformers, I would have liked more third-person shooters. But nah, there was, a, there was a good amount of third-person shooters. But, you know, whatever I didn't have, I could certainly go back and play old games, which I did. I went back and played a lot of old games. You know what I wish could be a Let's Play, but it's like, I just have to post a session footage of it, which would be like 20 hours long, probably. Luminous, man. Fucking PSP. PS Vita, too. Luminous uh, Electronic Symphony. Or a lap, uh, Luminous uh, Supernova, PS3. Fucking Chimera bastards. Now this is when the Chimera are still, inva are still invading. Uh, I believe Resistance 2 and 3 is where you start to see Feral Chimera, which are Chimera that were not even converted, like they were just born on planet Earth, you know? I do, I love the Resistance universe, because when it spans from all three games, it really becomes a really deep and rich story about, like, just fucking darkness. Like, this game does not, like, the series does not get uh, better in terms of hope. Like, it just keeps getting darker and darker, which really makes sense and adds up, because, again, we, like I've said a Already, like, it's 19, what, 50-something? Like, 1951 currently on Resistance 1? Like, we, we have nowhere close to the right technology to fucking fight these, uh, these, uh, these aliens. These, you know, foreign, foreign beings. Like, we're nowhere close. Like, we just, that's basically the, the story of Resistance. We got fucking smoked, and there was, like, nothing we could do about it. And I loved how I, I just love the fact that you get to Resistance Three and, and like that you're just you lost like a fucking so society has lost humanity has lost try and live on the planet it almost it reminds me of like you know how like like we're the dominant species of Earth humans humans are the dominant species of Earth there's we, we uh you know we there's many species on this planet there's dogs cats lions tigers there were, once was dinosaurs dinosaurs used to be the dominant forces of Earth uh, but they were wiped out. But, you know, it's just like, you know, someone takes over the humans, right? So it's like humans start to feel like the other, like, like our animals today, right? Like, uh, it's like being a chicken, basically. I mean, these fucking tank controls are just fucking awful. Yeah, that really helped fucking keeping this thing alive. Um, yeah, well, it's like once the Chimera invade, you're basically a chicken. You're going to get fucking killed unless you can just get away. Because uh, they're going to convert you into something, and then they're, well, you know, Chimera don't eat you, but, you know, it's a semi-decent metaphor to get my point across here. The Americans regrouped at an abandoned bus depot in southeast York. Under the command of a Captain Winters, they staged a daring tactical offensive. The Chimera had begun to close in on their position. If the Americans could secure the site, they would have a perfect landing zone and the battle would tip in their favor. Spires. Now we're at the part of the game where I'm probably not going to remember most areas until I actually see them for myself, so I'm, I, I hear the word spires, I see the level spires, but I'm not going to remember it until I'm like in there. Oh, is this where we meet Cartwright? No, wait, that's later in the game. That's way later in the game. Right? Uh, oh my god! Don't do that. I'm gonna have to keep, uh, constantly rem remind myself, too, that there's a weapon wheel. Shit. Uh, what, uh, where's the time? Oh, my God, goodness gracious, people. I'm gonna try and make these a tad bit shorter. Uh, like, 25 minutes I want to shoot for. They, I, because when I originally switched to a, like, a three to two video let's play a week thing, 
it was like, okay, well, they used to be four. I used to do them for like 40 minutes, but then I wanted to size them down to 25 minutes, which I did. And then somehow they kept, started creeping into like the 30 minute lane. So I'm going to keep them down to 25. How does that sound? Or do you like the 30 minutes? I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I just think about shit and then I just overthink it and then... And then that's when we have these weird ass conversations on these videos. Where I talk about really weird things. But you know what? They're, only, they're always timeless conversations. The kind of things that you can always reflect on and think, you know what? I don't know how I feel about Ryan, but he's saying something right. Right? I don't know. I'll see, I'll see you in the next one. What the fuck am I talking about?